Hey guys, Shane Stars with Droid Modder X. We're going to be unboxing the LG G3. I finally did get this in the mail. I had been following it on tracking. Apparently Verizon put a stop delivery on my package or else I would have had it on Wednesday. Uh, instead, I got it on Thursday because apparently the mailman, FedEx man rather, drove by my house and then he just literally kept driving and put a note in there that Verizon wanted this delivered on another day. So I guess they wanted everyone to get this phone at the same time pre-ordering I really served me no purpose. I was not able to get it any early, but that's just a little rant, and it doesn't have anything to do with this video, so uh, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and jump right into the unboxing of the G3. Okay, so the first thing you'll notice here is this metallic finish on the outer sleeve of the box for the Verizon LG G3, and on the back, it gives you a list of package contents, LG G3, Pre-installed SIM card. If you're on Verizon, you have an unlimited data plan. I would suggest uninstalling the pre-installed SIM card and put your old SIM card in there. We'll talk about that more as we go through this here. Standard lithium-ion battery, which is 3,000 milliamp hours, which is pretty outstanding. Wall USB charger, quick reference guide, product safety and warranty brochure, global support brochure, and then some other uh, stuff on here as well about the networking information, stuff like that. Now, I have to be honest with you guys. I did unbox this earlier in the week when I got it on Thursday. Definitely had to take it out of the package. Definitely had to give it a little bit of rundown. But it is only today on Sunday that I'm able to actually do this video for you guys. So I'm actually going to have some insight on the phone itself. This will be kind of a semi-full review of the LG G3. But we'll go ahead and take it out of its sleeve and get another nice box here. We'll go ahead and pop the top. And there is the LG G3, the star of the show. Go ahead and take the phone out of the box. We'll go ahead and do the ceremonial screen protector removal and same thing with the plastic on the back. Okay, so uh, we'll talk about this more later. Let's go ahead and see what else is in the box. We remove the lid here. Uh, you get a user's manual. Of course, everybody loves to read the user's manual. We'll just kind of throw that to the side. And you do get a USB charge port. You get the AC adapter, the wall charger adapter here, and the 3000 milliamp hour uh, lithium ion battery. Now this battery is pretty large compared to other devices. Go ahead and remove the back from the phone. Yes, on the Verizon variant, this is a removable back, which is awesome because you can uh, do things like uh, extended batteries. So 3000 milliamp hours is not enough for you. They do create extended batteries. You're able to uh, change out batteries, you know, most of us cannot last on one battery, although this is a large battery, you should be able to get at least one full day out of it. We'll go ahead and install that, but if for some reason you're not, uh, you can swap out your battery. So we'll go ahead and put this back on. Okay, so uh, real quickly we'll talk about design. This is a 5.5 inch screen with a very small bezel. We do have a little bit of bezel at the bottom, a little bit of bezel at the top. You'll notice a nice pretty Verizon logo there at the top and then your LG logo here at the bottom. On the back, this is a plastic back, but it does appear to be very metallic. It actually even feels metallic, but there is one advantage in my opinion uh, between a plastic back and a metal back. While the plastic back feels a little cheaper, uh, it is less prone to scratching. As you guys can see on the HTC One M8, I have no clue how in the world it has all of these scratches on the aluminum back, uh, but you guys can see it is pretty much tore up. Uh, on this one, however, it resists scratches very well, so I do like that about the plastic back. So continuing with the design, you have a tapered edge, which makes the phone feel a whole lot thinner than it actually is. If you look at it from the side, it actually looks incredibly thin, but when you look at it straight on from the bottom, you can see uh, that it is a whole lot thicker than it appears to be. Okay, so there's one very unique design element about the LG G3, that's that the buttons are on the back here. So when I first started using this phone, it was very odd to me and I kind of hated the fact that the buttons were on the back, but the more I used it, the more accustomed to this design uh, I became. So it's actually really nice placement for the power button. Uh, on the Galaxy S5, you have it right here. On the HTC One, you actually have to kind of push the phone down and then press the power button up top. Uh, but here on this phone, it's like just right where your pointer finger would be. So you actually can touch the power button there and that's nice and easy. Of course, volume down is right below it, volume up is right above it. Okay, so as we're kind of like taking a tour of the device here, you see that you do have a speaker on back. That's one thing that I've really come to love about my HTC One M8 and also my Nexus 10 is that the speakers are on the front of the device. That also makes for a really big 
ugly bezel. Uh, here it is on the back, which makes for a much nicer bezel on the front, but you do have to kind of cup the back of the speaker to hear it well, uh, which is kind of a drawback coming from the M8. Okay, so the camera on the back here is a 4K camcorder. It also shoots 13 megapixel stills. The aperture size is f2.4. It also has a really advanced camera sensor. Okay, so one other awesome feature of the camera itself is that it does include optical image stabilization. So this should mean much clearer, more focused, especially paired with that laser focus. You should get crisp, clear, uh, just high definition, high quality pictures out of this camera. The 2.1 megapixel camera on the front should be perfect for taking all the selfies that you want to take. We'll go ahead and talk about specs. The Verizon LG G3 is rocking a Qualcomm Snapdragon 801 processor. It's quad core and is clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. So it is actually a pretty snappy, pretty fast processor. It delivers all the speed that you will need in your phone. It does rank pretty high on Quadrant Score and Antutu Benchmark. I was able to get a 24,000 Quadrant Score, which at the very least matches the Galaxy S5 and the HTC One N8. And we'll get into how they compare later on. I'll do some side-by-side -side comparisons of all those devices. This also has three gigabytes of RAM, so that's all the memory you'll ever need. You should not run low on uh, RAM space with this device and then it comes with 32 gigabytes of hard drive space. Now speaking of the 32 gigabytes of uh, internal storage, if we go to settings and we go to storage, you'll see that while it has 32 gigabytes of space, there's only 23 gigabytes available. Now I do have a few applications that I have installed on this phone since turning it on for the first time, uh, but even with those applications I'm only using 1.4 gigabytes of the data. So in all this phone comes with 24 gigabytes of available data. That being said, there's all kinds of bloat on this phone. So if we go into, uh, if we go into the app drawer, you can see all the Verizon bloat. And then it comes preloaded with a few LG applications. And then we also have some useless applications for a lot of people like the ISIS wallet. There's NFL mobile and you have some applications like hotels.com and clash of clans. Those are all preloaded without your permission and they take up valuable space on the internal memory. Now when we talk about battery life this does include a 3000 milliamp hour battery. According to Verizon that should get you 22.8 days of standby time. Now I will have to say that this does an excellent job with standby time. If I go to the gallery real quick and I go to my screenshots, one full day of use uh, better usage time was 12 hours and 12 minutes and I was at 51%. Now that's pretty outstanding considering that on that particular day I had over four hours of screen on time. So not only is it giving us really good standby time, just in the couple of days that I've had it and used it, I've noticed that I've had excellent battery life even when I have been using this phone quite a bit. Okay, so we'll open up the settings tab and just take a look at some of the features here. If we go into display, you can actually do a few little customizations here. You're able to change the screen off effect. Uh, the CRT animation has been around since Gingerbread, but now uh, LG has decided to add a few more. You have the black hole and the fade out options. You can actually change the home touch buttons, so your navigation buttons here. You're able to change those if you go to button combination. So you just press and hold and slide that in the bar, and then you'll see it appear down there at the bottom. To remove them it's the same thing and if you would rather have a different order you can change the order as well so then if we go back you can change the color of the navigation bar and you can choose whether or not you want it to be transparent you can also choose to hide them all together it's nice to see some root type customizations built into the OEM stock ROM. Okay, other than that, there are some gestures here. There is one-handed operation similar with like the Note 3. You can shrink down the keyboard. And this is a 5.5 inch display. The size of the display can hinder you at times. So when I'm, I've only really noticed it when I'm trying to reach the very far uh, top left-hand side of the screen. And while we're speaking of the screen, I should go ahead and note that this is a quad HD display. It is double the resolution of 1080p. The pixel density is 538 pixels per inch. You're not going to see any pixels whatsoever on this display. Uh, so far, the only drawback to the QHD display is just the fact that it is the first QHD display and app developers have not updated their applications to give us that type of resolution. So you're going to notice that uh, some of the applications don't look as crisp as they could look 
just because they have not been updated to that high resolution. Uh, one thing that you will notice is websites will look great. Uh, any kind of high quality content, uh, if you're trying to watch 4K videos on YouTube, if you were trying to look at text documents, text images, or if you're just looking at photos that are in a, of a high resolution, you'll definitely notice a difference uh, between this screen and the One M8 and the Galaxy S5. And now, you will tell the difference if they're side by side, but just looking at this device on its own, it may not really stand out to you that much unless, of course, you have the phone directly in your face. That being said, this is uh, has to be one of the top screens on the market. Like I said, the first QHD display on the market. Okay, so a few other things that are standard on the LG G3. You have the smart notices up top. So basically, they're pitching this as a personal assistant. So your phone is going to tell you things that you need to know before you even know that you need to know them. So just basically, it's going to study the way that you use your phone. It's going to study your habits on your phone, how often you check your email, how often you check your text messages. And it's going to give you suggestions of how you should be using your device before you even need to use your device in that way. So if we just click it here, it's going to give me some standard. I just turned on the phone notifications. There's a smart notice tutorial here, smart card notifications tutorial telling me how to turn these things on. And then I can go to smart tips. So once you've enabled all those things, your phone should actually begin to assist you with smart notifications. Another feature that LG is really trying to advertise here is the knock code for the lock screen. There are several lock screens that you can select, swipe, face unlock, and then this new knock code. Basically, it is a pattern code, but instead of swiping a pattern, you just kind of tap a pattern. And I tried it the other day. It is actually pretty nice, and it's just a different way to unlock your screen. Okay, another feature here is the smart keyboard, so we'll just go in and open up the keyboard. So basically, the smart keyboard learns your typing style. It does include swipe, so like the Galaxy S5 and the Note 3, they all have a swipe keyboard. This now has swipe integrated, and then the quick move feature allows you to quickly uh, fix any typos. So you're going to get like, if we type something wrong, it's going to give us several other options just like any standard swipe keyboard. Another feature here is the LG Health. So this just allows you to track your exercising and your diet routine. And then this does also include a quick remote. So you do have IR sensors up top and you're able to control TVs in your house and also cable boxes. So that is another a neat feature that is also present in the HC One M8 and the Galaxy S5. So guys, that about wraps up my review. Uh, the things that stood out to me the most, the things that I like most about this phone are the Quad HD display. The picture quality on the display really is quite incredible. And then the battery life. For me, this has just kind of had a wow battery life. I've had my phone unplugged all day. It's 4 o'clock and I'm still at 87%. I've used my phone quite a bit today. So even with, you know, five or six hours of screen on time, you're not going to be able to kill this battery life, which is pretty impressive. Other than that, I thought I'd hate the buttons on the back, but it turns out that they're actually pretty well placed and they're very convenient. So I actually do like that feature. And the camera takes really good clear pictures and I'm really enjoying the laser focus so far. But anyways, guys, like I said, that about wraps it up for this video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. You can find more of me at DroidMotorX.com. Thanks, guys, for watching. Be blessed. I'll see you in the next one.